Sellers Professional Development Associates. My name is Michelle. I'm Cody. And I'm Alexis. So we work in the PDC or the Professional Development Center and we've been trained in resume, cover letter, and career advice. So the reason you're watching this video is you have been accepted to the Eller College of Management. Congratulations. But some element of your application may not have been up to par. So we're here to help you work through some of the problems of your resume, cover letter, or interview skills and help boost you up to the next level so you're really competitive when it comes to jobs and interviews. Hi, welcome to your interview workshop. My name is Michelle, and I'm really excited to help you bring your interview to the next level. You know, the interview is such an important and critical part of the application process, and really how you portray yourself is of utmost importance to you getting your dream position. So we're gonna break this, this interview workshop up into three parts, before the interview, during the interview, and the procedures you should follow after the interview. So let's first talk about before the interview. You should have two goals that when you're applying for a position. One, you should know who you are as a professional in the working world, and two, who the company is that you're applying for. So when you're looking at who you are, you should, this is the time where you should really work on you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses? You know, what is your experience? What is your background? What is your, you know, your, your one minute pitch that really describes who you are? So personally, what I do is I look up the most commonly asked interview questions and I will actually write them out and physically answer each question. Because one of the most embarrassing things you can do in an interview is to not have an answer to an interviewer's question. So you really want to be thoroughly prepared and really be able to differentiate your answers and really come up with solid responses. On the other hand, you also want to know the company. You really need to know what the company stands for, what are its goals, what are its missions, what are they looking for in a candidate, and how can you help them achieve their goals and their, their missions. And so once you know about yourself and about the company, you're going to go to your interview, make sure you know the time, and you show up at least 15 minutes early. And know that your interview starts the second you walk into the door. So greet the, the receptionist or whoever you're meeting with, with, you know, very genuine, very nicely. And when you're sitting there, look very focused and turn off your phone or leave it in the car and make sure you're not really being distracted. You show that you really, really want this position. So you're willing to you know, sacrifice the time before and after to really achieve this job. So before we get to during the interview and the procedures to take while you're actually sitting in the interview, we're gonna go take a look at what to wear. So this is how an ideal business professional situation. So the guy should be in a nice suit that you, um, is tailored to you. You want it to be very tailored. One button if you're standing up, no buttons if you're sitting down. A nice tie and make sure you're wearing just clean, you know, solid colors that really you know, don't aren't flashy and stand out and just really highlight who you are as a person versus something distracting on your clothing. Women, it's very important to just be very, very modest, as modest as you possibly can be for an interview. It's your focus is on yourself, not on exactly what you're wearing. So again, clean cut colors, wear a business suit with something that's very tailored to you. You can either wear pants or a skirt. This um, mannequin's wearing pants and that's fine. Make sure you either have a collar or you could like as I'm wearing, you can have just a very nice, clean uh, t-shirt below. If you're gonna do jewelry or accessories, try to only highlight one item. So either earrings, a, a necklace, you know, a bracelet, but don't do all three. Make, have very clean, basic makeup, and make sure you wear little to no perfume because that is also can be very distracting. Now we'll go into what to do during the interview and some of those procedures. So we've already gone over how to prepare properly for an interview and what are the you know things you should do before like knowing who you are as a person and knowing the company. So now we're gonna go through what happens during the interview. You'll most likely be waiting inside a waiting room and just an interviewer or two will come meet you there. They'll take you back to the interviewer, in your interview room while you sit down. Make sure you have a very solid firm handshake, you greet them with a smile, and greet them as how they introduce yourself. For example, if they say, my name is Mr. Smith, return Mr. Smith. Or if my name is Mark, you can talk to him as Mark. So let's look at some of the basic questions you are guaranteed to be asked. You'll probably be asked, tell me about yourself or could you please give us your one minute? And that's your time to really talk about who you are as a person and the qualities you want to represent in that company and also some future career goals. So a good way to remember this is the 20-20-20 method. 20 seconds in the past, 20 seconds in the present, and 20 seconds in the future. In the past, you want to highlight things about your hometown, kind of your background, and some past involvement you've had. And in the future, or the present, you wanna talk about kind of what you're doing right now. So that's your current clubs, maybe some work experience, and possibly 
a summer internship. So you can use think of the president as a president within a year of where you are right now. So you maybe just had an internship or you're just about to start one. In the future, you want to think of this as your long-term goals. So what are your career goals? You know, what is your involvement you're really looking for? And maybe your five-year plan and also your 10-year plan. So now that we've gone over your one-minute pitch, let's move on to your STAR method. So the STAR method is the easiest, most simple way you can respond to behavioral-based questions. These are the questions that can be very subjective. So tell me a time you failed. Tell me a time you succeeded. Tell me about a time that a team member wasn't pulling his weight. So when you respond to this, this type of question, you want to use this method. So the STAR method stands for situation, task, action, and results, or resolution. So you really want to focus on the resolution most specifically because this is kind of describe the situation. So the situation was this. The task I was really assigned with accomplishing was this. Here's the action or the steps I took to solve this problem, and the results were this. And when you talk about the results, you want to tie it into your future. So, you know, I really learned how to work on a team, and I'm really excited to apply this kind of skill into the future jobs. So now that we've gone over the STAR method, let's work on your common questions that you could be asked. So the most common questions you're guaranteed to be asked that we kind of just went over are your tell me about yourself, your strengths and weaknesses, and tell me a time you were a leader or a behavioral-based question. So just remember again, tell me about yourself as your one minute or your background, and uh, your strengths and weaknesses are kind of who you are professionally. Really highlight your strengths and you know take your weaknesses and turn them into a strength. So they shouldn't be things that will you know make you lose a position, but things that it will help you you know really improve. So maybe you take on too many positions. Maybe you know you sometimes you're not as detail oriented as you hope to be. But show how you're going to improve them. And just a, a good trick for interviewing is always talk about your weaknesses first because you always want to end on a high note with your strengths. And overall, uh, tell me a time your leader goes back to the STAR method and behavioral based questions. So overall, differentiate your experiences in your question responses. So every question is asked, talk about a different experience. It shows you're a very vast person with lots of experience and you have a lot of variety in your work experience. And finally, look up more questions online. There's hundreds of thousands of websites with basic interview questions and it gives you more samples on how to respond. And practice, practice, practice. It's so hard going into an interview cold and saying things for the first time. All right, we're gonna continue the during part of the interview. I've asked Cody and Alexis to help simulate maybe an interviewer who needs improvement and an interview who's very professional and very composed during their interview. So I'm gonna start with Cody and ask him a few questions about you know, his strengths and weaknesses. So as you're watching, look for the things that you would change or what really stand out to you. So pretend to be the employer and what are the things you don't like about his response. So Cody, could you please tell me about your strengths and weaknesses? Of course, so my strength obviously is that I'm like one of the top in the class. Um, I'm really, really smart. Um, I get really good grades, a 4.0 student. Um, do you want to know some weaknesses now? Ideally, we'd like to see what you could improve. Okay, on. yeah, I mean like I, I'm usually running late. Um, I don't always make it on time. Um, I'll try to let you know the night before if I won't make it, but you know, I'm pretty busy to be honest, so I, I might not make it. So as an employer, some of the things I wouldn't have liked about his response is his, inter his strengths and weaknesses weren't very professional. And also, he, he was fidgeting a lot and he started with his strengths first. And as sometimes you like to start out with the great things, but you should always end with the most positive in an interview. You want to end on a high note, and if you're going to do a weakness, make sure you turn it into a positive. So, Alexis, I'm going to ask you the same question and look for your response. So, one of my weaknesses is that I do tend to take on a lot of work. So, if my team members aren't necessarily doing as much as they should, I try to pick up the slack and really make sure that everything is going smoothly. So, sometimes that can mean that I have a little bit too much work on my plate. Um, some of my strengths are that I'm really good at time management, so I really do try to make sure everything is done on time, that everything is done when it needs to be. Very good. So again, she started with her weaknesses and ended with her strengths. And even when she talked about a weakness, she turned it into how she's trying to make it a strength. So Cody, I'm going to ask you one more question. Can you please tell me about a time, using the STAR method, that a team member wasn't pulling his weight? STAR method. OK. Um, well, one time, I had a team member, and he he didn't really do anything in the group, to be honest. I did everything. and. We, I was just so sick of it. I went to my teacher and I tried to get him kicked out of the, like the class or my group at least. And 
she didn't do it, so it was just kind of an awkward group throughout the whole thing. So yeah, does that kind of answer your question? Okay, so he did not use the start method, which is you know something he really should improve upon. And he's slouching, and it's just it's not a very solid response. And something you always want to watch out for is you want to always want to talk positively about your coworkers. So even if they weren't you know maybe the best team member, you need to show how you're really showing them how they can improve and how they can make them a better team member. So Alexis, I'm going to ask you the same question, and again using the start method, can you please tell me at a time a team member wasn't pulling their weight? Sure. So I was in a business math class, and we were tasked with coming up with this big group project where we had to use different calculations for an oil company. Um, the problem was that one of our team members wouldn't come to meetings, he wouldn't respond to emails, and we didn't really know why. So we wanted to get the problem fixed, so we ended up reaching, up to him, reaching out to him, kind of seeing what was going on and why he wasn't necessarily pulling his weight. Um, we found out that he had a lot going on at home, so he'd been missing a lot of things. Um, but we really just talked to him about how it's important for all of the people in the group to, that everybody pulls their weight. So I think that he really took from it that everybody needs to try to be involved. So we really tried after that, so it was, turned out great. So like you noticed, she used the STAR method and it was a very easy to understand response. So last things while they're here, I want you to notice again, Alexis is very up still and straight. And something about Cody is he's very distracting and probably you as a, as a viewer saw him fidgeting. It was probably very distracting and something that could distract the interviewer from actually seeing who you are and see the quality of your responses. So thank you and we're going to quickly go to what you should do after the interview. So I hope you found the interview workshop helpful. I just want to kind of conclude with what you should do after the interview. You know, after the interview is just as important as before and during to really solidify yourself as a strong candidate. So at the end of your interview, you always want to ask some follow-up questions. This is usually about two or three questions about the company or the person you're interviewing with and really see, you know, what their missions are, what their goals are, and to show some extra interest. You know, end the interview with a strong handshake and exit the room. Once you're at home, make sure you reflect on your interview and see what you could have improved upon and you know, how you can improve for next time. But the most important thing to do after the interview is to send a thank you note. This can either be handwritten or it can be sent through email. So when you send this interview thank you note, just make it very simple, to the point, address the interviewer by name, talk about some of the things you discussed in your interview, and ask and say something to the effect of, you know, I'm really excited to pursue a position with your company, thank you for your time and consideration sign it from yourself, and it's as simple as that, but it needs to be sent within 24 hours. So thank you again for joining me with this interview workshop. We hope you found it helpful, and please join us for future help. We have office hours four days a week, or you can send us an email at the lrpdc at gmail.com, and we'd love to help. So thank you.